Hey, what's going on there, YouTube? Welcome to another edition of Philly Brew Reviews. Let's drink a beer. So today we're going into another Great Lakes brew, and this time we're going to be checking out the Elliot Ness Amber Lager. Elliot Ness was, as you know, the uh, prime FBI guy who went after the biggest bootleggers of the Prohibition era. So it's a little bit funny that Great Lakes would name a beer after a guy who basically was known for being very much against alcohol, or at least, you know, that's what his job was. I don't know if he was technically against alcohol or not, but, you know, that's a story for another time. The bottle says, admittedly, it's a bit of a paradox, huh? to name our amber lager for history's most famous agent of prohibition, but it's a smooth, malty, and dare we say arresting paradox. Uh, it's an amber slash Vienna lager. Bottle says 6.1 alcohol by volume. Um, well, Beer Advocate looks like it just came up. I was having a problem with the site a minute ago. It's been really, really slow, so I had to go on Rate Beer. Um, rate Beer rates this in 94, and I believe the Beer Advocate community and the, the bros both have it at 95. I could be wrong, but um, obviously another solid beer here from Great Lakes. So I'm trying to find out, I'm going to read on Rape Beer's website what the Amber or Vienna Lager is. Um, it says, your typical macro brewed dark lager, often rendered dark with either brewer's caramel or black patent malt, but each brewery will have a different approach. Aside from caramely notes, these beers will not typically resemble other dark lager styles so much as they do the lighter styles due to the low amount of hops, malt, and body. Vienna is a beer style was theorized by Michael Jackson, but his off-cited example was Negro Medello, which is a macro dark lager like all the others. Some beers have taken on the idea of a Vienna lager as a distinct style, loosely based on the 1840 Anton Dreyer beer, and these can be expected to be an all malt with a fuller body and more character than the average macro dark. Um, okay, not really sure what a lot of that means. I'm really not that into the, <laughs> the brewing of the beer. Basically, the notes that I'm taking from it are that it's um, typically caramel forward, a pretty sweet and uh, syrupy lager. So let's see what we got, okay? I'm assuming it'll be just another great lager from, or another great beer from those guys at the Great Lakes. I'm sure pour is thick, I must say, wow. Okay, it does look very much like a thick beer. Got a nice head on it, very uh, reddish brown, kind of a ruddy brown color. Um, but very nice looking. Very high amount of bubbles coming up from the bottom with the pour still, but they're starting to slow down at this point. Uh, I'm trying to see if I can see sediment. Very opaque, much more opaque than you might think for a beer of this color. Um, Shape-wise, I see just about as much as I did out of the Edmund Fitzgerald Porter. It's a pretty thick beer. The head is uh, slightly off-white, a little bit of a yellow color tint to it and um, about two fingers high as you can see. Let's give it a smell here. Well, it certainly smells very sweet. Um, you get a lot of that caramel, that caramel note. Very malty and bready. But overall, just a sweet smell to it. Yeah, I mean, that's about it, right? Just a very malt forward and very sweet forward smell to it. Let's get a taste on it. Mm. Wow. Another really, really good and complex beer from these guys. These guys know what they're doing over there in Cleveland. Um, there's definitely like a caramel and a toffee flavor to it but it's actually not as sweet as I would have thought right off the bat, um, which is always the case with beers, because beers shouldn't really be that syrupy sweet, but it definitely has a very thick syrupy mouthfeel to it. A uh, really good malt coating left behind in the mouth. Um, just a very lip-smacking kind of 
mouthfeel to it. But it tastes like a beer. So you still get nice bitter uh, kind of glow to it, especially on the back end and as you're swallowing it and then on the, uh, the aftertaste. Just a nice beery kind of taste on the, uh, like after you swallow it. Um, there's a lot going on. It tastes kind of like uh, almost alish in like the grainy, kind of grassy feel to it, but then the sweet side of it and the mouthfeel really make you know that this is definitely a lager. Um, they just call it an amber lager. They don't call it Vienna or anything like that. There's really nothing on the bottom of that bottle at all. Um, well, that's weird. I'm actually looking at the bottle. It says best enjoyed by 73015, which is weird because the other bottles in this pack, one of them said November. So it's weird that they're all kind of different dates. Um, I just kind of noticed that now, which is I'm about eight days removed from that. It still tastes pretty damn good to me. So it's, it's certainly not a skunky beer or anything. Definitely hoppier and more beery than I would have thought by the smell and by the look of it. I would have thought it was going to be more of a kind of a syrupy sweet taste. Um, but this beer has enough balls to it from a beer standpoint that, you know, it definitely does that job too. There's definitely a sweet kind of backbone, but that is kind of washed away by the the beer side, I guess, you know, so, um, this is really good, I mean, this is a very, another really complex beer, I wouldn't go so far as to say it's like world class, but it's right under there, as far as hop factor, there's definitely, on the back end of the taste, and as you swallow, and then on the aftertaste, there's definitely kind of a bitter glow to it, not overwhelming, certainly not in the uh, realm of like what an IPA would be, but it's definitely there, it's noticeable. So I'll give it a hop factor of four out of 10. Um, as for overall rating, it's tough because I don't think I've had a lot of Vienna lagers. I'm trying to try to think of something else that I've had. I'm trying to really, if I was to rate this just from pure drinking experience, just on its own, I'd probably rate it four and a half stars out of five. Uh, I think that it's just underneath what you would call like a world-class beer. It's really, really good, very drinkable, Definitely, you know, happy to have it in the pack that I have, but um, overall, I just think that Edmund Fitzgerald and the um, the Dortmunder is just that's world. Those are world class. Those are just like a whole above, a cut above. But all in all, very good beer. Uh, definitely, if anybody if anybody sees this um, this variety pack somewhere and you want to pick up a case and you really don't want to waste your money. You will not be wasting your money on these guys. The last beer that I have in it is, um, it's a pale ale. So that'll be interesting because I haven't really had the hoppier side of beers from them. And I'm really looking forward to trying that because obviously that's a style that uh, I'm really starting to get into pretty heavily. So I'm looking forward to doing that one. But to just talking about this, this is a good beer and uh, I highly recommend it at four and a half stars. That'll be it for this one. And we'll see what the next one will be doing. Burning River Pale Ale. And we'll see what that's all about. So, see you at the next one.